Old Alabama Gardener, and this video I'm showing you how I can pinto beans. Pinto beans here. We're ready to do our first picking. <clears throat> Let me show you some other first up here. Okay, now up here you see a lot of green pinto, so those are not ready. See, there's a lot of green ones in there, so those are not ready. So it's down here that we want to look at. See these? These are ready. So let me take this one off now and show you. Okay, so this is going to be what we call pinto beans <clears throat> at the shell out stage. Now here you notice how yellow the pod is compared to one of the green ones. It's pliable this way and it will open easy like this. Now, you notice that the beans have a lot of color on them. They're not dry, they're plump, still got a lot of moisture in them. Uh, <clears throat> they're not mushy soft, but they're a little bit soft. So that's what we call the shell out stage. So there's our first pick. Now we go to the house and shell them. So here's the pinto beans that I picked. Now I'm going to get started shelling them. I got them all laid out here. I got my pan right there. I got a bag over there for the empty hulls. I want to know how many cups it is. You never wash these beans when you're going to store them in the refrigerator. Just put them in a bag. And then that's it. When it comes to canning, the question comes up about sterilizing your jars or not. And here's the correct answer. If you are pressure canning, like I'm going to do, then you do not need to sterilize the jars in boiling water. You do need to wash them, soapy water, like I'm doing here. But you do not have to sterilize them because the pressure canning it's going to sterilize it for you. Now, if you were doing hot water bath canning, like tomatoes or tomato juice, then yes, that only gets to 100, 212 degrees. So you would want to boil your jars before you put anything in them to sterilize them. So you see here, I'm just washing the jar inside. Now another tip is always check the rim of your jar to make sure it's not chipped. As I'm running my finger around the rim of the jar, if it was chipped, I would feel it. Rim, because if you don't, and you have one that's chipped, a little bit, it will not seal. So my next tip is what about the lids? Well, the lids, of course, need to be washed. Always wash your lids. I just do it with a sponge, soapy sponge. Doesn't take much. I wash both sides. Put it over here in the sink. Now I'm going to do what's called a hot pack. And that means that I'm going to pre-cook, not much, but I am going to pre-cook these beans. And the question always becomes is how much water do I need to have in the pot 
so that I will have enough liquid to fill up my jars. Because I want to use this liquid here that I'm pre-cooking the beans in to fill my jars. So now let's count them, see how many we got. We've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. We got sixteen cups. Now we know we got sixteen cups of beans, but that still doesn't tell us how much water we need. So what we do, we're going to put one cup of beans in a jar. And the reason I'm doing that is because they're going to swell up some when we first, when we do our pre-cooking and then when we do our actual canning. Now, I'm going to put water in there up to the neck of where I want the water to be in the jar. Okay, so we're looking for his space, which is going to be about right there. So now we need to measure the amount of water in here so that we can figure out how much water we need in that pan over there. So I got a two cup measure in here. And it's almost a cup and a half of water per pint jar that we're going to can. Cup and a half. So we said we had we said we had 16 cups of beans. We're going to put one cup in each pint jar, then we're going to fill it up with water. So that means we need a cup and a half of water for each jar. 16 jars, that's 16 cups plus 8. 16 cups and then the half cups, which would be 16 halves, but we'll convert that to a cup and make it 8. So we need 16, we need 24 cups of water in that pan to cook our pre-cook our beans and have enough water to fill each of the jars. So now we'll bring this 24, actually I added one more cup. So 25 cups of water, we're going to bring it to a boil. Now another question that's often asked about canning is how much water should be in the pressure Canner. That's this is the pressure canner. So I'm going to show you. Now, my canner recommends three quarts. All right. So here we have a, a, a ruler. So we'll go down and I have to put my finger down there on it to hold it up. Looks like we're about one and three quarter inches. You could put two inches if you wanted to in there. Yeah, that's about one and three quarter inches. So that's not not measuring on top of that though.
Now the other thing you can do is you want the water to come up the side of the jar a little ways, but definitely not over the jar, not even halfway. And the reason why is because steam is what makes that jar get hot inside. And if you cover that jar completely with water, then the steam can't do its work. And I have seen people that do that, but that's not the way you're supposed to be doing canning. All right, so we got our water boiling, and now we're ready to dump our beans in here. Now I'm going to go up and over and look at this pan back here. So what I've got back here is a pan of hot water and I'm going to put my lids in there. Now there are people that says no you don't have to do that. But you know what? I've been canning for over 40 years and I've always done this this way. So I don't see any reason to change now. So I don't want to boil them. It's not boiling water. It's hot water. And that's a difference. So don't boil them, just, just warm them up. Once we put the beans in the jar and we're ready to go over here, the jar is going to be hot. So we don't want cold water down there in the pressure canner because it might break a jar when we, when we do that. So we'll start We'll, we'll put this up here. We don't want it boiling either, but we do want it to be warm. And we need to bring this back to a boil and boil these for three minutes. Now then, one more thing we got to think about, and that's salt. Now I use this kind of salt right here. The main thing you want to do is not have a salt that has iodine in it. You don't want to iodize salt because it'll turn your produce in your jar an off color. So just use any kind of non iodized salt is okay. And now the question is how much how much salt in the jar? And remember, you can always add more salt when you open the jar to cook it. But if you got too much in there, you cannot take it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with one-fourth of a teaspoon of salt in each jar. So here's my teaspoon. So I'll just get that done right now. And that way I won't forget it. Now I've also been asked, do I add any other kind of seasoning? to the jar of beans and my answer is no because once you open the jar if this what certain kind of seasoning is there you can't take it out but once you open the jar to cook it you can add whatever kind of seasonings that you want to all right we got a pretty good boil going on here so i'm going to set my timer for three minutes all right so now our three minutes is up we're ready to start putting stuff in a jar I'm going to keep the water boiling because I want it to stay hot. With a clean paper towel, you want to wipe the rim of the jar really well. Make sure there's nothing on it.
and then you get a hot lid. Now we're going to double stack our jars, so we got to put in another divider. Now we're ready to put the lid on. We got all our bean jars in here there's an arrow right there and I gotta line it up with this arrow that's on that handle over there like that and it will seat and lock like that so now we bring it up to make sure that this lock right here is free to move. And right now the only way you can do it is with a sharp pointed knife. Reach in there and get it. See if it, see how it comes up. What that does is it it's a lock to prevent you from opening this lid when there's still steam pressure inside. Later on, you'll see it'll be up like that. When it's up like that, it's got its locking mechanism in place. Over here is another safety. This is a pop-out plug. If it does overpressure, let's say you don't watch it carefully, and it goes over pressure, gets too much, that pop-out plug will blow out. Probably make a lot of noise for you. But it will prevent your pressure cooker from possibly exploding. This is a safety. Here is your steam vent, and we'll put a weight on that once we get to a certain point. Once this steam vent is blowing steam pretty good, and it, and it is now, what you want to do is you want to set a timer for 10 minutes, because you want to allow that steam to escape for 10 minutes. So that there's nothing in the pressure canner except steam. No, it won't be air, it'll be steam. Alright, our 10 minutes is up for venting. So we put the weight on. And watch the gauge. Now I notice the little safety lift thing is up. And the pop-out plug back here on the back is up. So now we're interested in what happens here on the gauge. When that gauge gets up to about eight, eight and a half, then you want to start turning your heat down so you can adjust it. I'm going to go to the small eye. Uh, right now I've had it on the big eye to make it heat up quick. Now I'm going to go to the small eye. Now it's slowly coming on up to 10, but I don't want to go way over 10. I don't mind if it goes to 11, but I definitely don't want it to go way up to 13, 14, 15. So that's why I got to start turning the heat down. Take it easy, take it slow, let it come up there to 10. And then we're going to start our timer. Time it for 40 minutes. Now our gauge is between the 1 and 0 on the 10, so that's 10. So I'm going to start our timer. I've set for 40 minutes. Now get me a chair. Sit down here so I can watch that gauge. Get me something to read. And watch the clock for 40 minutes.
All right, see our blinking light here? Our 40 minutes is up, so we turn the timer off. And we'll turn the heat off. But you don't do anything here or with any of this. You have to let it cool down slowly and naturally. Now it is permissible to move it off the heat. So that's what I'm going to do very carefully, of course. Because it, first of all, it's heavy and it's hot. And I'm not going to slide it because this is a glass top. So I'm going to lift it up and move it over. All right, so now all we got to do is let it cool down. Now the safety lock is down. The safety blowout plug on the back is down. The gauge is at zero. So now I can remove this. There might still be a little bit of steam in there. So you still want to be careful. All right, so it doesn't, doesn't feel like there's any steam coming out. So now it's still a good idea to put on some mitt, like oven mitts just to uh, make sure. And so I got to, um, and when I do this, I'm going to have a good hold on this lid so that if there's any steam in there, and it wants to pop up, then there we go. All right, so then carefully, you see a little bit of steam coming out. So carefully lift your lid this way. Now, when you lift that jar up, there's water on top of it, but don't tip it over to uh, roll that water off. The reason why is because that lid is not sealed yet. It's still hot, still bowed up this way. So it isn't sealed. So don't do anything that might make something get underneath that lid edge and not seal. Just lift, lift your jar straight up and out. Set your jar straight down over here. And don't worry about that water. Now that's the sound you want to hear. You hear them lids popping? You see that one how it's bowls up? See this one how it's bowls up? See they haven't completely cooled down enough yet to seal. But they're going to, they're, they're going to. there they went one. We'll just let this set and watch when these two go. How's that one right there went? 